Good morning and welcome to the Mission Church. This is my living room here. Um, yet again, uh, we are a church online. My name is Zach and I'm the pastor at the Mission Church. Thanks for joining us today. I want to jump right into our message, to our passage. We're going to be in John chapter 15, um, verse 18, and we'll um, tackle about, uh, oh goodness, um, 10, 12, 14 verses today. Um, before we do, I want to pray for us, though. Um, so would you join me in prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, would you give us ears to hear your word today? Um, your word today and, and what is said, what we're going to read and undertake are, it's so challenging. Um, would you give us eyes to see? Would you give us humble, humble hearts to um, receive what you are trying to teach us and to change anything that you are trying to change inside of us? Lord, I ask for your help. Heavenly Father, I ask for your help that um, the words that I say would be your words. We pray this in your name. Amen. As we look at John 15, I want to ask you a question. When is the last time you had a moment where you just stopped and just thought to yourself, my goodness, life can be so hard. Or, or more specifically, you've had a moment where you think to yourself, man, this world we live in, this world I live in, it can be so hard, so challenging, so difficult, so wearisome. How often do you have those thoughts? And, and what, what do you even do with those thoughts? What, what, what do you do in those moments where you think to yourself, man, this is really hard. This is exhausting. This world that we live in, um, this culture that I live in, um, the, the people around me, my interactions, man, this is hard. What, what, do, you, what do you do with that? Do, do you go, well, you know, I guess this is just it and... You know, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. I, that's something my wife says every now and again. Um, do you get frustrated and just want to give up? What do you do in those moments where you just acknowledge, man, this world we live in is really, really hard. This is really tough. It's really exhausting. It's, it's really what this passage is about. Um, in fact, I uh, just entitled today's passage, Conflict. How's that for a message title? Conflict. Because that's what it's about. And, um, and, and let me just kind of give you a, a picture here. Jesus, it's the last night he is with his disciples before he is going to die on the cross. Um, this is probably... Um, 9, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, maybe 12 o'clock at night, maybe, maybe it's even 1 in the morning. It's, you get a sense that it's very, very late. And Jesus, here's what he's doing. He's preparing his disciples for his exit. Jesus is going to go die on the cross. Three days later, he's going to rise from the dead. He's going to then, after he rises from the dead, he's going to spend 40 days in his resurrected body with his disciples before he's going to ascend into heaven. And then, man, the baton has been passed. Um, the disciples and the other fellow Christians, it is now their calling, their responsibility, their mission to carry the gospel to the ends of the world. And the disciples literally had no idea that they would be responsible to bring the gospel to the ends of the world without Jesus physically present there. And so what Jesus is doing in John 15, and frankly, he's doing this in John 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, and 17, five chapters, Jesus gives this long-winded sermon or teaching that is meant to train his disciples. And listen to this. It's meant to train you and I 
to go and bring the gospel to the ends of the world. And what he is doing in this passage is he is training his disciples. But more specifically, in these verses that we're going to look at, Jesus gives his disciples and he gives you and I a very stark warning a warning. Like, have you ever read a manual before and there's literally a page that just says warning and then it, you know, tells you all the things that you need to be aware of, of what could go wrong and what happens when things do go wrong and what to expect when do things do wrong. That's what Jesus is doing. And it's a serious warning, by the way. It's a serious warning. Listen to what Jesus says. This is in John 16, verse 1. How serious is Jesus' warning that he is giving to you and I? He says, I have said these things to you. These things would be the warning we'll look at in a moment. I said these things to you to, to keep you from falling away. Um, the New Living Translation puts it this way. I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith. Jesus in this passage is going to give us a warning. And he says, guys, this is so serious that if you do not heed this warning, you might fall away. You might abandon your faith. So I want us to answer three questions this morning. What is this warning? What is the warning that Jesus gives? Why this specific warning? What, the, the why behind the what? And then thirdly, hey, what's our part? How do we respond to this warning? So let, let's start here. What is the warning that Jesus gives us that he's trying to make us aware of? Look at, this is verse 18. We'll read verse 18 all the way through 20, and we'll highlight what this warning is. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. Now, this word, world, you're, you're going to see it a number of times in this passage. World, 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 world. The Greek word is cosmos. Now, um, the, the definition of the Greek word cosmos, it depends on the context. So, for example, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that's cosmos, and in John 3, 16, the world is people. Is, is all of people. Cosmos here, if the world hates you, cosmos in this definition is speaking about the culture, the, 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 the systems of this world, the, the people of this world, the way the world does things um, in compared to the kingdom of God or the world that God has for us. And so that, that, that's how we should understand this word cosmos. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, Therefore, the world hates you. Remember the word that I have said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they would also keep yours. What is Jesus saying? What is the warning? Hey, Christian. Hey, Zach. Hey, you who call yourself a Christian, Jesus is saying, I want to warn you that the world, the world, the, the people who don't believe in Jesus, they're going to hate you. They're not going to love you. They're going to hate you. He goes so far to say, they will persecute you. Now, this word persecute in our English language, we've made it mean something pretty significant. To, to persecute someone is, um, is to throw them in prison or to beat them or maybe even to kill them. Th that's not the Greek understanding of this word for persecute. Um, it, it means to revile. It means, um, it, it means to 
uh, yeah, revile. I, I, I probably can't find a better word for, for that. Um, l- listen to what Matthew says. This is Matthew 5.11. This is Jesus speaking. Um, Blessed are you when others revile, there's that word, revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. I want you to notice something that Jesus says in Matthew 5, and he's saying it here in John 15. Blessed are you when others revile you. Not if, but when others revile you. 2 Timothy 3.12. Let's read this one together. Um, This is the Apostle Paul speaking. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. They will be persecuted. What is the warning that Jesus is giving us in John 15 that he wants us to be aware of, that he says is so important that if we don't heed the warning, we could fall away from the faith? Here he says is the warning. The warning is that the world will hate you and will persecute you. The world will hate you and it will persecute you. And friends, um, this is categorical. This supersedes um, time and location. It doesn't matter what era you live in. It does not matter what location you live in. If you are truly following Jesus and you are truly obeying Jesus, you will have moments where you are hated and you are persecuted. Um, I believe it's a hundred million Christians today. It's a conservative number. A hundred million Christians today are said to live under severe persecution. Like we're talking um, Um, in danger of imprisonment, in danger of being beaten, in danger of being killed. Um, I have friends that are aware of people in their life, um, those that are um, uh, workers, missionaries in different countries, that, that literally know of people that are in danger or have even died for their faith. Now, You and I are blessed to live in a country where we will not be thrown to the lions or beaten for our faith. But make no mistake, we we live in a country and in a day that if you truly live out your faith, if you truly follow Jesus, you will, without a doubt, face some level of hate and persecution. This is the warning that Jesus gives. There's no free passes here. There's no free passes. Jesus is saying, I want to let you know that from here on out, it's not going to be an easy road. This is why Jesus says, if you want to follow me, if you want to follow me, you've got to pick up your cross daily. Okay, a cross in that day when Jesus said that was not a necklace you wore around your neck. A cross was an instrument of execution. It was an instrument of torture. It was a word picture of death. And that's what Jesus is saying. Hey, I want, Jesus is not trying to sell something to you and I, okay? He's not saying, hey, if you follow me, I'm going to make you rich and things are going to go easy and you are just going to have an easy life. Jesus is not selling something. He's going, if you follow me, I will give you eternal life. I will give you purpose. I will give you mission. I will give you a love that is greater than any and every love there is. But here's the warning. You will be hated and you will be persecuted. Now, why is this? This is important. Let's get behind the the why. Why is it that the world hates Christians? Because the Christians are to be loving and caring and merciful. 
Christians are to act like Jesus, and, and Jesus is, is perfect. He is sinless, and, and Jesus does nothing but love, and he does nothing but forgive, and he does nothing but show mercy, and he does nothing but bless. Jesus is this giver of good gifts over and over and over again. Why is it then that, that, that people will hate us as followers of Jesus? Why? Three reasons, and let's look at them quickly. Let's look at verse, this is 19 with me. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So see this, and I underlined it, I highlighted it here. Here's the reason why the world will hate you and persecute you. Because you are not of this world. Did you know that? Did you know that your identity is not found in this world and, and the world's way of defining identity? Did you know that? You are not of this world. You are not a child of this world. You are, if you are a follower of Jesus, if you've trusted in Jesus as your Savior, you are first and foremost a child of God. You are not of this world. I, I even want you, this might be weird, but let's just do it anyways. I want you to even say out loud, just say, I am not of this world. So, say that out loud. I am not of this world. Now, look what Jesus says next. He says, remember, remember, okay? Remember, Jesus is trying to get our attention. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, this is Jesus speaking. Remember, he's our master. Jesus is our master. We are his servant. Jesus says, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. What I want you to notice, and I highlighted it, is I want you to notice this kingdom language. This kingdom language. Jesus refers to you and I as servants and that he is our master. That's another way of talking about a, 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 a master is someone who is your authority, your ultimate authority, your king, your king. So let's go back to this. Why will you be hated and persecuted? Here's why. Because we are not of this world, but rather our allegiances belong exclusively to Jesus, our King. Why does the world hate you and I? Why will the world persecute you and I? because we are not of this world, our allegiance is to Jesus. So if you read your Bible and you read all the way to the end of, book of John, the book of John and you turn the page, you come to the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the story of the early church. The story of, of the church, of people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and are going and, and proclaiming the gospel to the ends of the world. And one of the major themes in the book of Acts is um, the persecution uh, of, of Christians. And what you will read is that Christians are literally being beaten and even killed for their faith. And do you want to know why so many Christians were killed for their faith? And this is in your history books. Um, Nero was famous. The emperor Nero was famous. The Caesar emperor Nero was famous for persecuting and killing Christians. Um, and, and so I think it was um, Domitian, I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, who came not too long after Nero. So we're talking 60 AD or so. It said that the apostle Paul was put to death by Nero. Um, but but in that day, the early church was persecuted and killed for their faith. Do you want to know why? It was almost exclusively because they lived in the Roman world and refused to proclaim Caesar, or Nero in this case, as their king. 
They said, no, 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 We're, we will not bend our knee to Nero. Our allegiance is Jesus. Jesus is our king. And so they started killing Christians because Christians said our ultimate allegiance is to Jesus. Let me ask you two questions and I'll ask them again at the end. Are you living like Jesus is your king? Are you living like Jesus is your king? Is there anything that has your allegiance over Jesus? Does money have your allegiance over Jesus? Does wealth, does a particular lifestyle, does materialism have your allegiance over Jesus? Do, do, do your kids have your allegiance over Jesus? Um, do politics, I mean, I don't know if you see it, but but I can't help but see that um, politics is the new religion of our day, right? And we are living in a culture that is telling us we got to choose sides. You're either a Republican or you're a Democrat. You're either a conservative or you're a progressive or a liberal. You're one or the other. You choose, you choose. And, and we, listen, friends, especially in an election year here, I, I want you and I to check our hearts. And I want us to ask ourselves, is my allegiance to Jesus... Is it to Jesus or is my allegiance to a particular political party? May we check our hearts in that. Is Jesus your true king? And if Jesus is your true king, you can expect to face persecution. You can expect to be hated but are you living like jesus is your king um i, I want to acknowledge that, that all the things that i listed there like a political party or um or or, or your kids or maybe or maybe your spouse or m maybe your job or maybe money none of those things are evil in and of themselves None of those things are, 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 are bad in and of themselves. Each of those things, in a way, are, are a good gift from God. Okay, they, they are a gift from God. But here's the problem. The problem is when we take a gift from God and turn it into a God. Our allegiance is to Jesus. And, and Jesus says, hey, listen, if, if your allegiance is to me, People are going to hate you for it. Um, there's a second reason. What, what's the second reason of why will we be persecuted and hated? Look at verse 21. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name because they do not know him who sent me. Jesus is referring to his heavenly father. Jesus says, Here, here's the reason why they're going to hate you is because they do not know your heavenly Father. People will hate you and persecute you. Why? Because the world does not know your heavenly Father. It's astounding to me. The majority of the world believes in a God. In a God but they don't necessarily believe in the one true God. And Jesus says the reason why people are going to hate you and kill you and persecute you and, and do all kinds of harm against you is because they don't know the Heavenly Father. If they knew the Heavenly Father, they would know that you are a child of God. There's a third reason, a third reason why the world hates us Look at verse 22. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin. 
Um, they here, Jesus is referring to the world. They would not, the world would not have been guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen and hated both me and my Father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without cause. Why will, be, why will we be hated and persecuted? Jesus is saying, Jesus is our King. And he is the light that has revealed the darkness and sins of the world. That's what Jesus just got done saying. He says, here's the reason why people are going to hate you. Because you belong to me. And what I have done is I have come and I have been the light of the world. And I have exposed the sin and the darkness that remains in these people's lives. And they've rejected me. The reason why they killed Jesus is because when Jesus exposed their sin and their darkness, they wanted nothing to do with the truth that Jesus was speaking. It's like this. You're, you're sleeping in the middle of the night in like, let's say, 2 o'clock in the morning. Someone turns on all the lights in your room. What do you do? You're, it literally physically hurts. Like you physically close your eyes and it hurts your eyes. It's disturbing. You're like, no, no, turn, turn it off. Turn off the lights. Because light has the ability to expose us has the ability to expose our darkness. It has the ability to expose our sin. And Jesus has just got done saying, the reason why the world hates me is because I have been a light into the world. I have shown their darkness. I have shown them their sin. And they don't want to acknowledge their sin. They don't want to acknowledge the truth that Jesus brings. And so what do they do? Turn off Jesus. Turn off Jesus. He's too bright. His light is too bright. It is exposing our darkness and our sin. And no, 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 no. We just want to live in our darkness and our sin. And that's why the world will hate you and I. Because we, Jesus says, are to be his lights. We are a light that is meant to expose brokenness, that is, is meant to expose lies, that is meant to expose sin. And when we expose sin, when we speak the truth of the gospel vocally, publicly, what it will do is it will shine light on the darkness of our world and our world says I don't I don't want to hear how Jesus is the only way and the only truth and the only way to eternal life that's too exclusive get out of here and you are persecuted for it now how do we respond to this warning how do we respond there's two things let's close here two ways that we are to respond two ways that we are to respond to the fact that we will be hated, that this world is hard, that this world is difficult. Jesus says, but when the helper comes, capital H, do you notice that? Um, paraclete in the Greek, it's speaking of the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. The Holy Spirit will bear witness about Jesus, about the Father. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. How are, do we respond to this warning that we will be hated by the world? Here's how we respond. By courageously bearing witness about Jesus to the world. We courageously bear witness about Jesus to the world. That, that's what we do. So, so when this world that we live in, it gets tired, it gets exhausting, and people are mean to you, or people are harsh to you, or people are rejecting you, you and I, we don't run and hide. We don't give up. We don't go, you know what? Goodness sake, this world, they're so lost. I'm done with this world. Jesus says, no. No. 
That world may be trying to tear you down, but that world, 1 John 2, 2, that world is the world Jesus Christ died for. And we are called in the midst of persecution, in the midst of people hating you and reviling you, you, we are called to bear witness about Jesus. We don't run from it. We run to it and through it. Let me say that again. We don't run from it. We don't retreat. We run to it and through it, proclaiming the gospel. Do you remember when Jesus is hanging on the cross? One of the statements that Jesus makes as he is being put to death, Jesus says, Forgive them, for they know not what they do. Or I think of Stephen in Acts 7, who says something similar as he is getting stoned to death. He, continue, he bears witness about Christ to death. Do you have the courage to do that? There are 11 disciples who are listening to Jesus as he gives this speech. Ten of them will bear witness to Christ at the cost of their life. They'll die for their faith. Are you willing to be persecuted for the sake of the gospel? That, that's how we're supposed to respond. And here's the second thing. Um... I have said all of these things to you to keep you from falling away. This is chapter 6, verse 1. They will put you out of synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Your time is coming. When whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. How do we respond to this warning? Here's what we do. Re we remain faithful. We do not fall away. We do not give up. We remain faithful and steadfast in Jesus our King amidst any persecution. That's what we do. We remain faithful to Jesus our King. Why did all of the disciples, I wonder if the disciples heard this. I wonder if they heard this and said, wait a second, hold on, hold on Jesus. You're saying that if we follow you, it could literally cost us our lives. That we would literally, we would literally be put to death. We'd have to maybe say goodbye to our, our, our wife and our kids because we're going to die for the sake of the gospel. Peter, the apostle Peter, tradition is that his wife was crucified before his eyes. And then he was crucified himself. So if you're sitting with the disciples... And Jesus is saying the same exact thing to you. Hey, the world's going to hate you. In fact, they might even put you to death. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to remain steadfast and I want you to continue to proclaim the gospel. How many of you would say, No, I don't want to die. I'd rather live. I don't want to be put to death. I don't want to be beaten for you, Jesus? Why didn't any of the disciples choose that? Why didn't any of the disciples just say, Jesus, I don't know, I'm done. I, get, I don't want to do. I don't want to die. I want to live a comfortable, cushy life. I want to make a decent income. I want to live in a nice house. I want to have a white picket fence. 
I want my kids to grow up and, 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 and go to a nice school and get married and have great grandchildren and, and what... Because, G, listen, because Jesus is putting all of that in jeopardy. He's going, guys, if you follow me, this is going to happen. And it might happen to you too. Why didn't the disciples just quit? Because Jesus... Is worthy. Because Jesus is worth dying for. That's a, that is a big statement. But it's an amazing statement. I want you to think about this for a moment. Jesus, our, our King, Jesus, our God, He is so amazing that He is worth losing everything for. And that's why the disciples said, okay, Jesus, we'll follow you. Because they saw Jesus beaten. They saw Jesus crucified on the cross. They saw Jesus mocked and spit on. And then they saw Jesus rise from the dead. Physically rise from the dead. And they heard Jesus say, I have eternal life. In me is eternal life. Go tell the world that they too can have a resurrection after this physical death. Have a resurrection and spend eternity in heaven with Him. And so every single one of them, except the Apostle John who wrote this gospel, get put to death for the sake of the gospel. They saw that he is worthy. Is he worthy to you? Is Jesus worthy enough to where you will put him in front of everything? I, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so beside myself that this is this is our Savior. Isn't He so good? And I just want to encourage you to soak into that. Just, would, you, would you just soak in and just meditate on how amazing Jesus is, that He is worth dying for because He died for you. He is worth dying for because He died for you. He is worth living for because He's given you life. He is worthy. So here's two questions that I've already asked. I want to encourage you to just think about them, pray about them. And maybe you need to even confess some areas where you're not walking in this. Are, are you living like Jesus is your king? Or have you made something or someone in your life your, your true king? Are you living like Jesus is your king? And then secondly, are you bearing witness about Jesus to the world? Even if it might cost you everything. Can I pray for us? Gracious Father, thank you that you sent your son Jesus to be the light of the world. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to take every sin that we've ever committed and to that you placed it upon him upon the cross and that he has died for our sins. He has covered our sins and that in Jesus Christ, we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. 
Father, would you open up our hearts and reveal to us the areas in our life where we have made other things our allegiance rather than Jesus. And that we would live making you, Jesus, our King, and that we would boldly declare and bear witness about you, Jesus, knowing that you, Holy Spirit, are in us and empowering us. Pray this in your name. Amen. Let's worship together.